Good morning, Stampers. Hi, I'm Tina with Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. Today, I'm going to try to do a card um, a little bit separate of my regular Technique Tuesday. I was on the internet and saw these really fun cards that use a product called Chivatronics. The Chivatronics are little tiny LED lights that you can add to your projects. And so I was totally enthralled with it, so I had to buy a kit. Now you can buy a kit, and I'll put a link in this video description. Um, you can get a kit for about $30, and what's gonna come in it are um, 10 sets of lights, and there's three lights per set. Okay, these little tiny lights. I used one there. Um, so you'll get 10 of these. You get um, copper uh, tape. And this is what um, makes your connection to the light, um, both positive and negative. And I believe if you order the kit, you'll get one or two little batteries. And it uses, these, it uses these little CR batteries like uh, you used to use in your watches and things like that. So we need one of those. Um, I did buy, to go with this, because I the, once you start using this copper tape, you'll see it's a little bit cumbersome until you get used to using it. So I had bought this Circuit Rider pen. Um, not cheap. Um, I'm really disappointed because this thing is brand new and I can't get it to even come out of the pen. So I, I may keep playing with that. Maybe I need to shake it more or something. But before you invest in one of these, the copper tape is a lot cheaper. So anyway, last night I was playing and to create a circuit, to light up your items where you just do a push button, which I have done before. I have, uh, if you look on my uh, blog page, I have one where I did a lighthouse and you push a button and the lighthouse lights up. The push button ones, as I'm finding now, are not that difficult. So now I wanted to try where you pull and get your connection. See where it lights it up? Okay, so I worked on this one last night, and it's work in progress. My slider's kind of a little edgy, and I had a little bit of a short in my light. So I wanted to keep playing with that and see if I could figure out a little bit easier way. So this morning, I scaled the whole thing down to where I'm working with just a small area and just the one pull tab that lights up his unicorn, his horn. So the trick is to, to get your connections to where they'll, you know, uh, connect well. So that's kind of work in progress. So I have a couple little tips and tricks that helps work with that. Now on these Chivatronic lights that you buy, in the kit that you buy, um, I believe they come and they're all white. They do make these in other colors, which would be really fun for uh, Christmas cards and things. They have green and red and I believe blue or yellow. I think it's blue. But I did find a trick. If you don't, because one of these packs of lights itself costs $30. So if you not sure what colors you want to use, get the white ones. Take your Stampin' Blends marker, your alcohol marker, and you can actually color the LED light with your Stampin' Blend, and then you have a colored light. So that's just a little tip um, if you don't want to invest in all the different colors. You can get the white and kind of make them any color you want. Or when you use your lights, you'll, you'll do like I'm going to do today, and I'm going to put a little piece of vellum that I've colored in the color. I haven't decided if we're using yellow or pink today for my unicorn. So I colored it with my alcohol marker 
and added a little wink of Stella. So I've got, it'll color my light. So I'm going to set those aside. So this is the one we're going to make today. Okay. And to try to speed things up a little bit, I've already cut my, I have a regular white card base. And I'm just going to set that aside. And then I have a mat and I have my designer series paper. And this designer series paper is out of the Sia Silhouette set. And I just love it. It looks like your um, uh, pigment crystals. So it's done for you. All I did is take some of my shimmer paint in a spritzer with some rubbing alcohol. And I did put shimmer paint on here. And out of the stamp set, which is Leave a Little Sparkle, are these little stars. And I stamped just a few of the little stars in silver. You can't really see them um, in the new um, Delicata Silver. But I just wanted something subtle. You could use gold or any other colors you want. But I just wanted something subtle. So this piece is prepared. The matte piece, on this one I went with, uh, you know, the Pacific Point. But I decided I wanted to do the unicorn more in a pinks. Uh, I have a, a young girl that I want to give this card to for her birthday. And she's a big fan of pink. So we're going to do basically a pink unicorn. And this is the new Rococo Rose. And I think it goes really well with this. Alright, so there we go. So we got our map. And we've got our Leave a Little Sparkle. And here's the unicorn we used. And I've already cut out the unicorn using the uh, stitch, stitch label die cuts and colored her. I colored her in just some pinks and put some colored flowers in her hair and a little bit of bling. And then take an X-Acto knife, okay? Whatever it is you want the light to shine through, you, you put a hole. Now these lights are bright enough to shine through a cardstock. It's just going to be very muted. So if you look at, I don't know if it'll show with the lights of the camera, but if you look at this one, you can almost see the light where um, it's shining through the, the uh, paper. So these are really bright little lights. But for this purpose, I want her horn to be very prominent so I've taken an exacto knife and just cut out the inside of the horn okay now we're not going to attach our vellum yet and I'll show you why so what I want to do is I want to attach this piece to here so I'm just going to use a little bit of glue now bear with me I went on the internet and tried to find videos of this technique um, Chibatronics itself has a website, uh, chibatronics.com, and there are some techniques and tutorials on there. They're very basic. They teach you how to uh, build the lights in basically a, a, a little book, teach you how to lay out your diagrams and things like that. So Chibatronic does have, you know, support, you know, to help you learn. So I have my piece. And I'm going to figure out about where I want this. And for the purpose of knowing where everything's got to fit on this, I'm going to lightly take a pencil and outline my image. Like I said, bear with me. I'm kind of learning this as we go also. Okay, so we've got our outlined image. We're going to set this aside. What we should do, though, with your image down, put it, go into whatever you want to light up and put a dot right in the middle where you want that light. Okay? And there we go. We have our little dot. And I created a tiny little template that is the shape of our lights. 
because if you look at these lights really closely, the the long gold there and the short gold, okay? The short gold is negative, and you'll see a little negative mark there next to it. So it's, it's pretty easy to tell the positive from the negative. But by drawing, drawing this, it gives me an idea of exactly where my tape is going to have to go. So I'm going to put my negative off to the right. My dot is in the center. And then I'm just going to draw. And that shows where my light goes. I'm going to try to zoom in just a little bit on this for you. Okay, so we've got our, our little image. And so we know that the pointed end is negative. So I'm going to put a little negative there and a positive here. Okay. Then we're going to take our battery, determine where we want our battery in this project. Okay. Your battery has also got a positive and a negative. Your positive is the flat side, and you'll see a, a great big plus on there, and this side's your negative. Now, since I've been doing this, I do it with the negative side down. Okay. So I'm going to figure out about where I want my battery that's still within my lines here. So when you draw your diagram, so I'm going to put my battery pretty much close to the, the middle. So we know that we want our negative to go across this way, down, and over to our battery. Okay. I'm going to put a little X where I want the battery. Okay. Now we need our positive because these cannot, your positive and negatives cannot touch each other. They don't touch each other until they meet the battery. So I'm going to take and go this way with my positive and come over to where my battery is. Okay. Now this area right here is where I'm going to put my switch. Okay. I'm going to um, be cutting the, the connection about right in here. So let's go. I'm just going to put a little wavy line there. That means that's where I'm going to um, do my, my break in the circuit. Okay. So now you take your tape, your copper tape, and it's easy, easier to kind of leave it on here because you want to have a continuous flow. If you break the tape, it, you know, it's pretty tough and it's got sticky on it. If you break it, all you need to do is just go over it again with another layer on the area it broke just to reestablish the connection. So I know that it has to go over the point, so I'm going to pull it right in here about to where, just next to my dot. I'm going to go over, and now doing turns, I'm yet to really do a very good job on these. But like I said, it's pretty forgiving. So I'm going to come down, go along my line, do another turn. Or try to do another turn. Like I said, it's pretty daunting for me still. And I'm going to go right over where I want that battery. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to trim this. And I've trimmed it a little long for a reason. I'm going to twist this a little bit so that it's got the sticky side up. It's stuck to the, the piece, and it's also got the sticky side up. That will help hold my battery in place. You can also use double-sided tape. You're going to need a bone folder, and you just take, you know, don't kind of lay it a little bit flat and just smooth out your, your copper tape. Okay. 
now we know our battery goes positive side up is going to go right there right over the top of where you put your little sticky see it kind of helped it now we're going to be reinforcing this to stay in place so it's okay so now we'll do our positive If you're doing more than one light then you do it the same way with with your tape going over the negative of each of the lights or going over each of the positives just keeping these positive and negative separated from each other so now I'm going to start it on the positive here making sure they don't touch try to do a turn try I'm I'm still trying to there was a lady online that really had this down for doing that turn but as long as you don't break the connection it doesn't have to be pretty okay so make my next turn And now it's going to go right over the top of that battery. And I'm going to cut it a little bit long. Because I'm going to go up to the battery. And then right over the top of it. And because I want that to stay in place pretty well. I'm going to take another little piece. I should have cut it a little longer. And without touching my negative over there, I'm just going to use this to tape it down. So that helps hold our battery in place. We're going to smooth it out. Now we're going to take one of our little lights. And these lights come with three in a, in a piece. They're pretty forgiving. They're pretty sturdy, but you'll, they're on a uh, non-stick back because they have adhesive on them. So I'm going to take one off. These aside. Now, remember, your positive is the long and your negative is the point. So we're going to put it right. You, you can see the little tiny light right about Right about there. Right in the middle of it is the tiny little LED light. So that is the little light that you would color if you wanted to change the color of your light. So I'm going to lay this down on here. And then I'm going to use my bone folder. So you need to kind of press it down. And as you see, we have a light connection. Okay. We've got a good connection there. It's lit. It's all good. So now I want to, and I'm going to bring in just a little ruler. I'm going to bring in a ruler. I want to break my connection here. Remember we drew, we drew our squiggly line where we're going to put our pull tab. So I'm going to put this right over there. Oops, I forgot my X-Acto knife. Hold on a minute. I'm going to draw a little line, and I don't want to go beyond my uh, image piece. So I'm just going to go just short of the line, come straight across that tape. Doesn't need to go very far. And we're going to cut a slit and break the let me bring something in to cut on i don't want to cut up my desk here and then i'm just gonna cut along the lines i just drew and see we broke our connection and the light went off and i'm gonna cut i'm gonna cut a slit because we're going to slide our connector through there.
So see, now we have a slit that breaks our connection. Okay. And that's where we're going to put our pull tab. I'm trying to even this out a little bit so that it'll, our pull tab will slide well or slide smoothly. A little thicker because we have the mat on there already but that's okay try to get my uh, scraps out of there okay so we have our slit now we need to create our pull tab but what you have to create first is what you're going to put I'm trying to pick up a piece of paper over here on my desk. So, this is a little bit wide. I need to move this tape out of the way a little bit here. So it's not in the way and not going to connect in our tab there. So I think I need to thin this just a little. Oh, it might be okay. So now, to just I'm not even sure how to describe it. But you're going to fold, probably, it doesn't really need to be much, much wider than that. And that is about, uh, maybe a quarter inch. Okay, so you're going to fold once that way. You're kind of going to do that whole Z fold thing. And you might want to bring your bone folder in for this. And then fold it back the opposite way. And then back again. And I think I have to do two more. What you're basically creating, okay, I gotta do one more. Or I can actually trim it right there. Let's see if I did it right. This was the hardest part I had. So now you've created, kind of looks like a little W, but what you're creating is an X. See this X? So what you wanna do now is take your copper tape, which is what we're gonna create our pull tab that will reconnect the circuit so I would do this starting with it laying down and go the length of it right in the middle And then back in there. And I'm going to go one more time so that I have plenty of room on my circuit. Just moving it over slightly. And then it has a full. And then I'll show you what we're coming up with here. Smoothing it down with my bone folder. So now you have a little, I messed it up. How did I mess that up? Oh, here's what I did. Wait. I need to come up with an X. And I may have messed this up. 
I did. Somehow, I don't have my X. Okay, so let's try that one more time. So I probably needed to do one more fold. You want to end up with an X shape. I'll fast forward through this, my apologies. So you have, when you're doing this little switch, you actually have one, two, three, four, five, six folds, okay? And that way, we will end up with our X. Okay, so see, now we have our X, okay? I'm gonna secure these down. Okay, so now what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna take your X And you're going to put, let's see, which way do I want it? Let's do this way. All right. Okay, so take, put two together, slide them through your slot. Okay, so it's slid through your slot. And I think I need to make my slot just a little bit longer. But see, when you pull it, it engages the light. So I'm going to make my slot just a little bit bigger because of the thickness of this that we just put through here. So make my slot just a little bit wider. Not a lot. Just, and I'm going to move it back just a little. Okay, so now we have our slot. We're going to slide our piece back through. Oops, wrong X. I wondered what I did wrong there. That was a piece I messed up. So we're going to take, put this back through our slot. And then the back side folds like this. See? And then when it slid, so get this out of my way. When you slide it, okay, when you slide it, it will connect the circuit. Let's make sure I'm sliding here, okay. There we go. There we go. See there? Okay, so now I need to create a pull tab. Sorry about that. Now for my pull tab, I did use um, the thick Whisper white cardstock because you want you want your pull tab to be strong. I mean, somebody's going to be you know pulling it and doing their thing, and so I wanted it to be strong. So I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to put a little bit of tape in here. Let's 
tape it together. Now you have a nice strong pull tab. And then you want to figure out about where you want your tab. So if it's in, okay, so that your piece is in, a little concerned about whether or not that's touching that or not. So when your piece is pushed in, remember your line to where you're at here will kind of tell you where you need to be here. Okay, so um, here's my line, here's with the circuit closed, okay, so I'm going to trim it off with the circuit closed about there. And now, I do want to use dimensionals to attach this, and the trick I found out for the reason of that is that when this is sliding in and out, the dimensionals underneath your piece here is going to keep pressure on the switch when it opens. So we've got our tab, and I'm doing it with the fold side out. I mean, it doesn't really matter because I glued it or taped it, but so I'm going to take a couple dimensionals, put them on my tab here. I'm going to do one more set of dimensionals because we have to build up our so it's going right over the top of it that'll give us pressure and we've got it closed In the future, in hindsight, to give yourself more room, I would bring your battery down a little farther than I did here. Because, see, everything's pretty close there. So here's our tab. There you go. Okay. Now, we are going to bring in and kind of secure our battery in place. I'm going to bring in some uh, cement, uh, foam strips. And the first thing I want to do is secure this battery in place. So I'm going to build a little nest around the battery. To make sure it stays where it needs to. don't want it to come out of there so build it fairly close especially if you're mailing them you know it's going to be bouncing around a little bit and also by this one being at the end I extended it a little so that my push and pull tab wouldn't go beyond which it's really not going to because of the size of the you know, the slit doesn't go that far. But if you've done your slit too far, you can always just put something on the end there, which will stop it from going. And just without removing the protective coat, I'm going to put one right underneath this tab with the sticky side up, not underneath and it just help keep it level okay just so it's not falling down a lot so now we're going to add the rest of our foam strips
corner please this is going to be what we and it's okay for your foam strips and stuff to go over this copper as long as you don't break the connection To be honest with you, I'm going to be really surprised if this turns out the first time doing this video. Like as you've seen, I've made maybe three of these, so each one is a little bit of a learning curve. So it's something you're, you know, until you get used to it, you're going to have to be pretty patient with it. Okay, make sure our switch is working. Okay, when we get the top on it, it's going to hold pressure when the switch is pulled. Okay, so now we're going to add our image piece. And I always put glue on these when I know I have to, when you have uh, adhesive strips. Um, if you put glue on them, it gives you a little room to move, to move them instead of, you know, how they stick right down, like every time you don't want them to. I want to make sure there's glue on here. Because you have to be built up to at least the height of your battery, okay? So these just are the right size foam strips for me. And you have your lines where you drew with pencil so you can kind of see where you need to be. Let me let this glue for a second. Oops, and I moved it. Trying to let them get into place and secured well before I start pulling on my tab. Okay, let's see. Did I do it? What? But you know what I did? I forgot to put the vellum in there. I wonder if I can do this without destroying it. I'm going to do a little yellow um, guy here and see if I can get this in there before the glue dries all the way. So I'm just putting a little adhesive on it. I'm going to see if I can slide it in there on here. That was silly. Get so preoccupied getting everything else right. I think we saved it. <laughs> Let me make sure my adhesive's down really well now. Now, to keep this from folding, I am going to take just a little bit of scotch tape here and just lay it over this. It's kind of flat. This gives it a little bit of strength. Okay, now we're going to bring in, let's make sure our circuits work in. Oops, I'm not glued down. 
I pulled it up, so now I'm having trouble getting the glue to stay down. Well, while we're doing, waiting for that to dry, let's bring in the card base. If I can see where I put the card base. So now, when I do this card base, since we have this little slider here, I am just not going to glue really close to that. I want that to be able to slide underneath the card. But I am going to do my edges really well. You ever notice when you drop something with glue on it, it always lands glue side down? Because I just did that. And I like using glue because then I can move things around a little bit when I'm trying to level them up. And while that's still drying, let's add some bling. Gotta have bling. These are some... Uh, uh, clear epoxy I have left over and it had some stars in it so I wanted to use them let me bring in the uh, good old take your pick tool let's grab a couple stars let's put one let's put one there and if I can pick it up let's put another one about here I'm going to have a good time picking these up for some reason today. Try my tweezers. Let's set that one there. Now, for the greetings, this one, It's Your Day, is from uh, the set um, Capture the Good. And I just wanted to, It's Your Day. So I'm going to add some dimensionals to this. A lot of times I like to use the edge of my dimensionals for long skinny. So let's put this on there. It's a little long. Let me trim it. And I did use um, on my die or on my punch, I made my tag a little bit shorter. Um, you know, where you can stick your uh, label back in and shorten it. That's what I did there. So let's put It's Your Day here. And then this greeting, which is in, in the stamp set, leave a little sparkle wherever you go. I did do this in the new glitter black embossing powder don't you love that and then I just fussy cut around it and we're gonna put a couple dimensionals on that with that little piece that we just had Let's put this one right down here. Okay. I'm still waiting to make sure that's dry. And I can just keep adding my bling while I'm waiting. Let's add a couple more bling here. Let's do one there. Oops. Let's do a little heart where we're going to put pull. I'll write pull right there. Okay, you guys, let's see if it works. Ready? Did we do it? What? We did. Look at that. 
and I did his horn with the vellum and the yellow, and I put a little bit of Wink of Stella there. Push it back in and pull it out. What do you think? There you go. Chibatronics. I will put the link to the Amazon store, or you can go to um, chibatronics.com. And I'm sure they sell the kits and the accessories and everything like that. Um, it, Like I said, you'll get your lights. You'll get your copper tape. You should get at least two batteries with it. And I assume if you order it through Chivatronics.com that they will give you instructions. So there we go. Look at that. There's our... Let's just write on here real quick. Can't go without finishing it. Let's just write pull right here. Of course, I grabbed the only pen that's not writing. There we go. There's a quick slider Chibatronics card. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed today's class. Have a happy stampin' day. Bye.